Hey everyone. In this video, I want to explore a new feature that's in preview right now, and that's actually super important, resource instance rules for Azure storage accounts. Uh, and as always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment, and share would be appreciated. Now, the reason I kind of stress this is in preview is when I go to demo this, and there's a bit that's really not working correctly right now. I did raise it with the product group when I found the problem. They are fixing it. But at this time, it doesn't work exactly as intended. But it will do soon. So let's take a step back. Um, if I think about the idea that I have a particular storage account. So say this is storage account one. And I want to be able to control uh, who is allowed to interact with that storage account. Then when we think about controlling interaction, remember, most PaaS services, including storage accounts, have the concept of kind of like a, a firewall type component. So I can restrict based on, for example, IP addresses, but not everything has kind of a public IP. And then I can think about, well, I have concepts like role-based access control, where at both the management plane i.e. interactions with Azure Resource Manager, and for some of them, the data plane. And this includes Blob, for example, on a storage account. And then I can control, well, what can you do at the data plane? So if I want to be able to control from a network perspective, hey, who can actually talk to that storage account? There are mechanisms, but those mechanisms today are really built around the idea, well, I have a virtual network, and remember, I break that into different subnets. And one approach I can use is I can create a service endpoint. A service endpoint makes specific subnets known to the service. And then I could enable, hey, subnet one, because I've added a service endpoint, I can then say, yes, uh, subnet one is allowed through. Another approach is that I can actually, for example, use a private endpoint. And with a private endpoint, I basically project an IP address from that local subnet into that subnet. And then I can talk to that IP address. And from the storage account, I could block everything else. So there's two different kind of ways I can control from a networking perspective talking to the storage account. But what about if the service doesn't live within a virtual network or can't easily interact with it? There's lots of other kind of PaaS services in Azure. For example, I might have something like a serverless logic app. And I'll say this is logic app one. Um, it could be Synapse, it could be SQL, um, container registry, there's a whole bunch of these things. But I still want to say, hey, look, it wants to interact with the storage account but rather than have to open up a very generic allow trusted services, which is a configuration I can do on the firewall, I want to be able to say just this particular logic app, yes, I want to let you in through the firewall to my service. And that's what the resource instance rules are all about. So the resource instance rules enable me to do exactly this. I can say, hey, this particular instance of this service is allowed to talk to this storage account. It's just storage accounts today. Now, I mentioned a few different things. Um, I said the whole goal of this is I don't want to enable just any logic app um, or any service because we can kind of do that already today. There's a concept of allowing trusted services to talk to PaaS services. It's very common on the firewall. If I actually jump over and we take a look at this. So if I look at the firewall configuration, for example, of I'll actually go to my storage account and on my networking configuration, we can see at the bottom this exception and we can see allow trusted Microsoft services to access this storage account. And again, that is super common across most of the PaaS services. Now, when I check that box, what it's actually doing 
is enabling any instance of these services that are in the same subscription. So backup, data box, event grid, event hubs, all of these different services. And also any instance of these services that have a system managed identity that has permissions granted to it on that PaaS service, in this case, a storage account. So it's, it's pretty open. It's still restricting it to my services, but maybe I want to be even more restrictive than that. And this is what the resource instance rules allows. Now to use this functionality, whatever service I have here, I do have to enable the system assigned managed identity. So remember, this is this identity. <laughs> this is the identity that, again, it goes in the Azure AD. It's automatically managed by Azure AD. And only this particular instance of the service is allowed to operate. So there's going to be a system managed identity for Logic App 1. So I have to add, turn on that system managed identity. And then also that identity has to have rights to the data. So at the RBAC level, my kind of, my logic app one has to be given some right. For example, it could be blob um, contrib. And then I can turn on the resource instance rule for that instance, and then it will just kind of work through. So I must have the system assigned identity. I must give it data plane access. So again, that combination of RBAC and the networking um, really come into play here. But that, that's really all there is to it. And then I, I, I enable that rule. So let's go back and actually see this. So if we go back to our little demo, what I have done in my demo environment is we can actually see here, I've gone and added resource instances, we can see this section right here. And I've already added the type for my logic app. So it's a logic app workflow. And I've added my particular instance. Now you can also add other types here. If we click the drop down, I can see all the other types of services this supports. And if I was to let's say pick SQL Server, well, then we can kind of see, hey, I can pick, is it a particular instance? Is it all in the current resource group, all in the subscription, all in the tenant? So I do have some controls about exactly how granular I want to be on that. Now, here's the bit where this is in preview and it's not working quite right. I should be able to turn that off. I don't want to have that generic allow trusted services. Right now, there's a problem with Logic Apps. Um, I found the bug. I've raised it with the product group. They're fixing it. So in a few weeks, this will go away. But it doesn't work quite right today because there's an issue with they expect kind of two tokens and Logic Apps only sends one. So they're, they're fixing that. So I have to kind of fudge the demo a little bit right now and still leave that on. But I can still show you all of the kind of other components of this demo. So what do we have? So what I created was a logic app. Now remember the first thing you have to do is I have to turn on its system assigned managed identity. So I, I went to identity and then I set that to on so I can see. Now also I granted it the blob contributor rights on the storage account I'm testing it with. So remember we have both data plane and management um, role-based access control. And if I actually look at that role, we can see the permissions it actually has is at the management plane, um, nothing. But if we actually go and look down to the data plane, here I can see I'm looking at the data plane, and I can actually see, well, for blobs, it has a number of different roles, including some other actions. But essentially, I can create blobs um, with that system assigned managed identity. So the next thing I have to do is use it. So I wrote this logic app to basically trigger when I write a blob to a different storage account, this is kind of my source blob storage account, it creates a shared access signature to the source blob. And then what I do is I use the copy blob feature. So I basically 
create a new URI, this is going to my target storage account. I take the web URL that I just generated in the previous step, which is the shared access signature, and I'm using kind of a, a block blob, and I'm specifying that copy source, which tells it it's a copy operation. Now, the reason I'm using this HTTP action instead of copy blob is because I have to use my managed identity, and I can't do that with the built-in copy blob. So I'm using HTTP, and then I can turn on the authentication option, and here I'm telling it, hey, use the managed identity. I'm setting to use the system assigned managed identity, and you have to set the right audience. Now, this could either be just storage.azure.com, or it could be the specific storage account, in which case I miss off the training slash. I'm just sending it to the generic storage.azure.com. But this makes it use the managed identity to actually talk to the storage account, and then I delete the source blob. So if I run this, what I'm going to now do is in my source container, I'll just upload a blob. So this will trigger the Logic App to actually run. So I'll just pick kind of any file at all here. It really doesn't matter. I'll pick that file and upload. So that upload's complete. And what we'll see is, because I'm running this kind of in a debug, we'll see the Logic App will fire. And then we'll see it go through those four steps. And notice they all succeeded. HTTP put succeeded. It's using the managed identity. So that's both the data plane and it should be using that resource instance rule to allow access to just that based on that configuration I have. And that's really all there is to it. And now again, Synapse today works without problem. So Synapse, uh, you could go and test that right now. Um, but, but that's really all there is to this. When I make that request to the service, which is what you saw me do exactly here, you have to make sure that request is using authenticating with the managed identity. So I have to have the system managed identity, then the resource instance rule will see the token coming in through the firewall of the storage account and let that in but then I still need data plane access for that managed identity to actually be able to write stuff. So that's the complete flow, but what you'll be able to do once they fix this little problem is obviously turn off that allow trusted services, so it would only now be this particular Logic App. And again, hit that subscribe, hit the bell, and what I'll do is when they fix this, I'll mention it in the weekly um, My Azure update, and I'll probably post another just quick demo video showing without that enabled. But that's what it's gonna let you do. And again, you saw there was a whole range of services that I can leverage with this. So it's not just Logic Apps, all those other things that maybe don't inhabit a virtual network. Typically, I'll now be able to restrict my storage account um, interactions to only specific instances um, using the resource instant rules. Um, so that's it. I hope that made sense. I hope it was useful. Uh, until next time, take care.